Hi, my name is Richard Crawford, host of Supply and Demand, an enlightening webcast show where we delve into the dynamic world of the global supply chain, where we navigate through the complexities, disruptions, and innovations that shape this vital network of interconnected businesses. From sourcing raw materials to delivering finished products, we'll uncover the challenges that arise at each stage and explore the strategies for optimizing efficiency and sustainability. And each week, we'll highlight and discuss a specific supply chain event. Now, I'll be joined each week in each episode, of course, by my co-host and resident supply chain expert, founder and CEO of the Atlas Network, Kareem Kapuri. <laughs> How's that for an intro? Very good. Very, very good. Very sing-songy and quite nice. <laughs> okay, good. Well, look, Kareem, you've been a busy man. You, you are all over LinkedIn. You are writing papers. You're you're doing um, interviews. You you're very very prevalent right now. You've always been prevalent, but you know, very very prevalent right now. So what's going on? I mean, you know, busy times. Busy yeah. times. Supply chain is uh, growing and growing as an industry. You know, I think that you know it was it's always been very very important to the way that we do global trade. Um, obviously, post the pandemic. It highlighted so many breakdowns in the space and um, and there's just a lot of efficiencies and technologies and innovations that are happening within the space today that people are talking about. I mean, I'm fortunate that I've been doing it for almost 20 years now and uh, had an experience uh, where I get to see the entire supply chain from the prototyping to the manufacturing, the quality control, shipping, customs, logistics, delivery, fulfillment, warehousing, reordering, and back again. Process, uh, because the, the space is very siloed, you know, and many people just see a very particular view. So it's it's kind of neat that I'm able to see a lot of it. And, um, you know, really excited. A lot of great events that we've been doing. We did Manifest together, which was amazing this year. Great, great event in Vegas. Got some other things coming up uh, in the rest of this year as well. Some other big events too that'll be awesome i'm gonna be in china back in back in shanghai again there you go i'll be in shanghai in april i'll be seeing uh going to the alibaba headquarters while i'm out there which is pretty neat and uh yeah i mean just trying to trying to just grab it all and do it all and do as much as i can while i'm while i while i can so. while you're still young <laughs> while you're still young right exactly exactly <laughs> so, I'm just, try, just trying to make the best trying to make the best of it and, and really enjoying it. It's really yeah. good. Obviously loving all the stuff that we do together too. We're, we're continuously doing some really great work and meeting good people. And we've got exciting things going on as well, you and I. So yeah. uh, good things happening. Yeah. Well, look, I'm really excited about today's guest because we're going to be covering a topic that A, I find fascinating and B, I'm also really excited about. And it's in an industry that it isn't always the first thing to come to mind in the supply chain logistics world, but it is a very, very important one. And nothing moves, and I mean nothing moves in the industry without it. And that is the energy sector. And of course, energy is at the forefront of everything right now, especially when it comes to the health of the planet. And as you know, Kareem, from my other day job as host of the internationally acclaimed TV show, Leave No Trace, nice little plug there, um, this is a, <laughs> this is a subject very near and dear to my heart. So, without further ado, let me introduce our next guest. Michael Tao, originally from Nigeria, has his doctorate in chemical engineering from the University of Arkansas. Go Razorbacks! Mm -hmm. He's a licensed professional engineer and has worked with Shell USA since finishing grad school in 2012. He started as an engineer in New Orleans and worked through various roles in the company. And his last role is as the head of hydrogen operations at Shell USA. Um, and we'll be asking him questions related to hydrogen today. He currently consults for companies interested in hydrogen as part of their future energy mix. Michael, very, very big welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Richard. Yeah, you know, I'm honestly really excited about this conversation today because I was I was just chatting with Kareem saying how nobody really thinks about the energy world really initially when it comes to the supply chain logistics industry. Yeah. But as I said, nothing moves without it, right? And mm -hmm. it, it's an industry that is at the forefront of, of everybody's thoughts right now because obviously the health of the planet 
<laughs> plays a big part in how people look at that. Um, so tell us, what, what are some of the exciting things that are going on in your world right now? It's the explosion of hydrogen projects around the world. You know, it used to be, I'm, I'm based in California, it used to be, you know, a California show, but now it's a, it's a global show. Uh, yeah. uh, and I think a big part of that is COP28 that happened in the, in the Middle East earlier in the year. It, it, everyone is, is getting on it now which is where we need it to be. We need hydrogen to pass that critical point of mass adoption so that um, the cost can come down, the scale can go up. So yeah, it's, it's an exciting place to be. And, and are, we so, at that, are we at that critical point? Not yet. Right. Not yet. But we are, we are inching towards it. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, Michael, I agree with you 100%. And I mean, I've... Uh, I've been on several shows and talks about COP28 and what was discussed there and about the uh, zero emissions initiatives to get towards, you know, there by 2050 and uh, the efforts that have been put in place by Department of Defense and U.S. government to do these large scale hydrogen hub initiatives. Um, and that, I mean, really a statistic that stuck out to me that I heard um, during COP28 was something that, that was said, where they said that basically the emissions and kind of the greenhouse effects um, from kind of the oh, chain and logistics space is kind of the eighth leading cause of degradation of, you know, the quality of our environment. And I found that to be, you know, quite amazing. I mean, obviously we know we do tons of global trade and mm -hmm. these vessels have to get across the water somehow and these planes and these trains and they have to do all this back and forth and so there has to be some kind of effect but i never realized that it was at such a wide spread scale and and obviously the population of the planet is only growing and we're becoming a smaller planet through technology and supply chain needs continue to develop and grow globally we got to figure this out right because if we don't figure it out we're not going to stop consuming. So no. we just figure out how we're going to get to that place where we're going to have, you know, a much more decelerated yeah. process or, or less of an impact, right? Yeah, yeah. We, need to, we need to do that sustainably. Yeah. So, so, Michael, you're obviously a very, very educated man and you know your stuff inside out, but on why don't you tell our, our audience in layman's terms, really, because I'm sure a lot of them may not fully understand what is hydrogen fuel how do we how do we make it again a very very basic outline so people have a general idea so interesting you say that because hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe mm -hmm. the problem is it doesn't uh, occur freely you have to do work to get hydrogen in its pure form so uh, for instance water you have to split the water molecule to get hydrogen or uh, say natural gas you have to burn it steam methane reforming to get the hydrogen out so hydrogen basic uh, way to put it is, is produced right. even though your cause in the in the in the universe is the first element in the periodic table but well, you have to do something to get it oh. so it's an energy vector it okay. helps you carry energy from point A to point B. Very cool. Very cool. Now now I feel even more educated than I did before. Got my <laughs> got my PhD in, in hydrogen fuel now. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, uh, where I've seen an example of it, uh, an example of where it's really coming to fruition. I, I actually um, produced an episode of Leave No Trace. Um, which is my other day job, as we discussed, in Norway. So we did this episode about um, sustainable tourism in Norway. In the fjords, beautiful, beautiful, stunning landscape, stunning, just, just more gorgeous than I could have ever imagined it. And yet we came around the corner one day and there was a huge cruise ship, massive. And it just, it was like a big stain on the landscape. And I, and I asked, and um, about you know them coming in the kind of waste that they leave behind um what's coming out of their their propellers and however that ship is driven 
And what Norway has done is said that, yep, yeah, it's a problem right now, but I think in 2030 or within the next few years, every cruise ship that comes into the fjords has to be run on hydrogen. Yes. Yes. So I'll, I'll imagine, I'll imagine cruise ships are reaching out to the likes of, of Shell and people who are producing hydrogen to, to figure it out. Shipping is, is a big polluter, as, as yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, it, it requires a lot of energy to move that cruise ship around the world. Yeah. So, and when you're talking about energy, you're talking about pollution. Yeah, uh, right. So, yeah, so hydrogen is definitely one of the use cases. One of the use cases of hydrogen is in, is in shipping. Yeah, and of course, again, bringing it back to the uh, logistics world, there's a lot of shipping. <laughs> All right, All right, Michael, it's come to that time today. It's it's time for the hot seat. Are you, oh, are, you, okay. are, you pretty much, are you pretty much prepared for it? Let's go. All right, well, I tell you what, the um, let's get on the stopwatch here. Um, so basically, you're going to answer. I'm running questions. against the clock. Uh, you're going to be against the clock, yeah. So okay. we got we're going to give you three questions, and you have five minutes to answer it. Um, now I will tell you, as we always say, the leading candidate right now is Katie Date, who actually is the marketing director for Manifest, um, and she's sitting, Michael, at four minutes and fifty-eight seconds. Ooh. I personally, I personally don't think it will get beat this year. Um, <laughs> we basically, would have to do four minutes and fifty-nine seconds. So. Uh, but we're giving everybody the chance to get it done, and, and here's your opportunity. So, are you ready? I am. All right, the clock starts now. All right, Michael, what's up with the colors of hydrogen? What's gray? What's blue? What's green hydrogen? And even what is purple hydrogen? That's. A, a very good question, Richard. Hydrogen is actually colorless. Right. It's like air or, or oxygen or, or CO2. It's colorless. So the colors of hydrogen really refers to the methods and the energy sources by which hydrogen is produced. So, so you're not going to see pink hydrogen differently than purple hydrogen, for instance, it, it's, it's the energy source. So the most common way hydrogen is produced today is by steam methane reforming. You take natural gas, you pass it through, you combust it with steam, here comes CO2 and hydrogen. And that's gray, gray hydrogen. Yep. You don't like that because that's not environmentally friendly. So what do you do with gray hydrogen? You capture the CO2. Now, when you capture the CO2 using a method like CCS, then it becomes blue hydrogen because now it's an hydrogen that its CO2 has been captured. So that's more environmentally friendly than gray. But an even better one is green hydrogen. That's when you have renewable energy source to split the water molecule. So you have an electro electrolysis, which takes H2O, water, you split it into two, here comes oxygen and hydrogen. If the energy source is renewable, it's wind, it's solar, maybe hydroelectric power, then you say that is green hydrogen. That's like the gold star, the shining, person of, of the energy world. Now, you mentioned purple, and that's an interesting one. Some people call it purple or red or pink. It's when you get your energy from nuclear power. Yeah. So if nuclear power is a source of energy for this electrolysis, then you say it's purple. And, you know, if you call it purple or pink or red, it all depends on your view of, of nuclear energy. Is it environmentally friendly or not? Right, right. But that's, that's the colors. But very important, the, the big takeaway here is it's not actually the hydrogen that is colorful. Hydrogen is colorless. Yep. It's energy source. 
All right. Well, Kareem, I'll let you ask, ask this next question. You used up quite a significant bit of your time there, oh. uh, Michael, just to give you a little heads up. If we're learning. Um, Michael, how do you see hydrogen used in the supply chain today? We talked about that a little bit before. Why don't you give your take on how you think hydrogen will be impactful and will, will be used in supply chain? Oh, uh, that, that I will go quickly on that one. The, the heavy duty applications. So if I think about forklifts, if I think about cranes at the ports, if I think about shipping, the, 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 the intense heavy duty application, that's, that's where I see hydrogen being used. That's where I see us, frankly, getting the biggest bang for our buck. All right, you're, 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 you're on track, you're back on track. Question yes. three, as far as supply chain and logistics are concerned, what is the future, battery or hydrogen? Okay, uh, that's, that's a good one. Now, those are, both are actually better than, say, coal, right? So we're, we're trying to pick between two really good options here. So let, let, let's start from there. But as far as the future is concerned, hydrogen wins in heavy duty and long range applications. It's going to be tough for you to move that cruise ship from Norway to Mexico on battery. Yeah. You can do that with hydrogen. Hydrogen is pound for pound. It's more powerful than any fossil fuel. You know, that's why we use uh, uh, liquid hydrogen for, for, for rockets, right? So, yeah. so when the application is heavy, and by heavy, I mean either just mass or cruise ship or repeated use, like a forklift, yeah. like a crane, you want to go hydrogen. All right. Well, I'm going to stop right there. And unfortunately, you, you, unfortunately, you went over just a little bit, not by much, actually, not by much. Um, but I, I was going to give you a little bit of a heads up on the countdown, but what you were telling me was so fascinating, I kind of forgot. <laughs> so um, again, uh, it's very, very, very interesting. So I apologize for not giving you a little heads up, but you did not go over by much, Michael, but you went over just a little bit, but that's fine. Thank you, Richard. Yeah. And nice to meet you, Karim. Uh, nice to meet you too, Michael. Very, very insightful. And, yeah. and you know, we're excited about the future, of course. So, so, Michael, how can people um, get a hold of you personally if they wanted to ask any more questions about hydrogen? Yeah, uh, I'm on X, you know, formally called Twitter, mm -hmm. and my handle is Ask Michael Taiwo. Mm -hmm. oh, perfect. And um, Kareem, how are people going to get a hold of you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is always the best way for me to get in touch. I, I write a lot and I, I do a lot of interviews, as you know. Yeah. And then um, our website is theatlasnetwork.com, um, and that's where uh, where we're usually available too. Cool, perfect. Well, again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching and listening. And just a reminder that each week we'll have a very special guest on to continue our conversation in the fascinating world of the global supply chain. And don't forget to follow our LinkedIn and YouTube pages at The Supply and Demand Show. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you soon.